Lucifer, the light of your deeper self. By Hager, Grand Hierophant. Skull Press Publication. Copyright November 2010, Magister Hager, Ghent, Belgium. 2. Forward by Hager, Grand Hierophant of the Temple of Atazeth. There are many paths into darkness, many roads that lead into the twilight realms of shadow and light that we call abyssal mind. It is the mind or consciousness that is caught between the brightness of the burning sun and the cold, chill of the dark night. We are the opposite philosophers but not monsters, though our sharing in good and evil alike. We are the embodiment of purgatory, basking eternally in the nether regions between life and death, being neither, but mastering both. The Satanist or opposite philosophers is motivated by power and knowledge. However, he or she knows that these things are fleeting, that at the end of life they fade and become meaningless. To this end the Satanist leverages his resources to expand his own life spawn. As this ambition run contrary to the ideals of society one finds himself pushed to the fringe of society, an outcast who is really misunderstood. And, yet, we are that kind of monstrous other that haunts your fever dreams, that which you believe you do not believe in. We are all around you, although you feel our presence only in the blackest recesses of your mortal soul, the icy spot on the stairs, the flicker of shadow outside your window, the luminous eyes that stalk you in the night. We are the bearers of dark magic that is both destroying and constructing. We are the dark opposites. Our powers are varied and vast. Holding the secrets of an ancient lineage of powerful occultists, having the ability to create light where there was darkness, to animate the bodies of the dead of Western religions, and to bring them to freedom with unearthly speed. While all Satanists and opposite philosophers have a common pool of powers to draw from the tree of wit with its twenty-one dark gods, each of them holding the key to a select set of knowledge. From the deadly bite of the serpent. 3. To the chilling grasp of the lich, our combat powers can be as awesome as they are deadly confronting the religious hypocrites and child abusers. Often overlooked, but nonetheless important are the array of minor powers that we also possess. These powers are often executed at no cost to the caster and tend to make life much easier, performing duties and providing information. Far from being unprepared, the Satanist's list of powers is quite well suited to make sure that the opposite philosophy has the ability to both perform in battle and to live and fight another day. Welcome to the Shrine of the Baphomet. Carefully balanced between the physical and magical realms, we have a vast arsenal of both combat and non-combat powers at disposal. We possess through pathworking exercises the power to drain energy from our opponents, while replenishing their own physical strength. Like Lyches, we also have the ability to heal those coming to us in a dreamlike state of total human freedom. Their dreams for freedom become reality. Like vanishing shadows that glide through the night, awakened to darkness by self-initiation. Becoming mysterious beings beyond one's control. Pray as it were for your life and surrender your soul to the Prince of Darkness. In the depths of our ageless eyes we reveal, raw truths and secrets you fought to conceal. He's the beast in your heart and mind in your struggling for freedom. Deception is an effective defense strategy and the Satanists and opposites philosophers have a few deceiving powers as well, such as Enshroud which allows them to call forth the shifting shadows of the underworld to mask their appearance. Illusion and shadow can also make things appear, or disappear, as things they are not. Things are not always as they seem. The path of the Satanist or opposite philosophers can be a lonely one. Often misunderstood in his goals, he lives as it were in seclusion on the edges of society. His or her behavior is often alienated from the people to be rescued from hypocritical religions. I am the power. I am the glory, I am another god. Copyright November 2010, Hager, Grand Hierophant, Gent, Belgium. 4. Lucifer, the light of your deeper self. By Hager, Grand Hierophant of the Temple of Atazeth. The Abrahamic religions, Jews, 
Christians, and Muslims, claim that evil is coming from the dark or black brothers, as we are falsely called, is real and immediate. In fact, we are not dark, and black. We are light in Lucifer. What is evil for them, and for us? What evil means to them, we know, as for us evil is quite different, and simply this, to destroy and rebuild. We destroy, but we have the obligation to rebuild what we have destroyed for the betterment of humanity. This is our task, and sole purpose of being. Real, absolute, tangible evil as we dark or black brothers understand demands the most careful consideration in the acting. In fact, unless Satanas is perceived as the personification of true evil, destroy and restore, he and our endeavor become meaningless. The heart of our evil is going against Abrahamic ethics and culture. The kind of violence we understand is our sole responsibility. It is not, unless to defend ourselves, inflicting injury or suffering to a person or persons by an agent, or directly solo. Suffering is only an aspect of pain, which has three distinct components. The first is the cause of pain whether natural or deliberately is in real violence, or sado, mass or play. The action of violence as Satanists, the dark or black brothers are concerned is the active evil for good. Where is Satan as to be found, except in the great and the one satanic army? Secondly, whether in play of for real, pain is strictly defined as an acute mental and physical response to sensory stimuli. Pain in this sense is constructive if it means destruction and restoration, comma, whether mentally or physically. The third is suffering, which is the response to pain that includes terror, anxiety, alarm, and fear of annihilation, the waking up of humanity in custody through established religion. In fact, all is evil. There are two evils, very different from each other the hypocritical evil firmly established in the Abrahamic religions mostly and our kind of evil to destroy but to rebuild as an obligation afterwards. One great real evil is the growth of evangelical Christianity, and as we well know today the hypocritical Catholics with their extreme child abuse in every part of the world, not just in Belgium. We, Satanists, are rooted in a perception of evil to good. Today, we have more reason than ever to be concerned with evil coming from the Abrahamic. 5 religions, Jews, Christians and Muslims as Al-Qaeda and the Talibans are concerned. The teaching of diabology of three civilizations, Western Latin, Eastern Orthodox, and Islamic. Diabology is more extensive in the Latin West, than in the two other civilizations, and it reflects differences between the Western and Eastern churches. But, who is a Satanist? There is no question more crucial to man than the question, what is a Satanist? In fact, what is the Satanic man what kind of being is he? What are his essential attributes? Many thinkers on the subject and artists have sought to answer this question. They have looked at them and then offered a report on their nature. Their reports have clashed through the ages. One defined him or her as the rational animal. But, Plato and the medievals described otherworldly souls trapped in a bodily evil prison. Shakespeare dramatized man as a whole, not just the Satanist, as an aspiring but foolish mortal, defeated by a tragic flaw. Kant saw man as a blind chunk of unreality, in hock to the unknowable. Hegel saw a half-real fragment of the state. Victor Hugo saw a passionate individualist undercut by an inimical universe. Friedrich Nietzsche saw a demoniacal individualist run by the will to power. Sigmund Freud spoke of an excrement molding pervert itching to rape his mother, in this we do not see the Satanist. The purpose of life is to be raised up as close in unity with the cosmos, with nature. To interpret differently, the mystic cares less about understanding a supreme being, that about union with him or it. This union Dionysius called divinization comma or as we would say, the sinister. The whole cosmos longs to be united with us, human being, as we are, I am the power, I am the glory, I am another god. There is no god outside of us, 
but we are divine. The cosmos is a glittering sequence of hierarchies all serving to express and effect the assimilation of all things in the creative act of creation. In such a way, harmony is the concord of humanity drawn up towards the collective consciousness semicolon the Satanists all together, in one accord, burst with energy, radiating out in fecund variety, power and brilliance. In the Western mythology, the fallen angels were created and still are perfect, like everything else in the cosmos, and as angels they received every good and perfect gift commensurate with their status. Evil understood by hypocritical religions is not inherent in matter, in the body, in animals, or in everything that has existence. Our satanic evil proceeds from the evil will to good of the fallen angels and fallen humans. The evil of hypocritical religions is not a long nature but a distortion of nature, a subtraction of reality from the reality that is nature. 6. The nature of the dark gods or energies is genuine and good. What is sin? Sin is an invention of the Abrahamic faiths. What was a sin 100 years ago, may be no longer a sin in Christianity, varying among human evolution. Satanas forces no one to sin. We sin of our own free will. Satanas never tempts us, only we decide. Every existent acts causally in accordance with its identity from electrons to brain neurons to conscious minds. The world is entirely determined in a physical sense, but the question of free will boils down to a question of context. Within the context of your mind, your consciousness is not a bunch of atoms held together in a particular way, but a perceptual and rational faculty that processes percepts into concepts from the lowest to the highest, this includes the creative process and problem solving. There is never something created from nothing, there is no such thing as a divine inspiration, it is all a rearrangement of what was previously there. Both within the context of consciousness and the context of interpersonal relations, people do have free will. This means that they do make choices, they act on those choices, and they are responsible for those choices. The free will philosophy is a human need as real as the need of food. It is a need of the mind, without which man cannot obtain his food or anything else his life requires. Satanism teaches free will as part of satanic philosophy. Satanic philosophy is not a bauble of the intellect, but a power from which no man can abstain. Anyone can say that he dispenses with a view of reality, knowledge, the good, but no one can implement this credo. The reason is that man, by his nature as a conceptual being, cannot function at all without some form of philosophy to serve as his guide. Satanism is a philosophic idea to function properly as a guide, therefore, one must know the full system to which it belongs. An idea plucked from the middle is of no value, cannot be validated, and will not work. One must know the idea's relationship to all the other ideas that give it context, definition, application, proof. One must know all this not as a theoretical end in itself, but for practical purposes one must know it to be able to rely on an idea, to make rational use of it, and, ultimately, to live. Men is master of his own sex life, not the religious establishments. The fact that a man's sex life is shaped by his conclusions and value judgments is evident in every aspect. It is evident in the setting he prefers, the state of dress, the caresses, positions, and practices, and the kind of partner. This last is particularly eloquent. 7. The fact that a man's sex life is shaped by his conclusions and value judgments is evident in every aspect. It is evident in the setting he prefers, the state of dress, the caresses, positions, and practices, and the kind of partner. This last is particularly eloquent. No man desires everyone on earth, he passionately makes his choice. Each has some requirements in this regard, however contradictory or unidentified, and the rational man's requirements, here as elsewhere, are the opposite of contradictory. He desires only a woman or even a man he can admire, a woman or man who, to his knowledge, shares his moral standards even on the playground of sex.
his self-esteem, and his view of life. Only with such a partner can he experience the reality of the values he is seeking to celebrate, including his own value. The same kind of sexual selectivity is exercised by a rational woman. Romantic love is the strongest positive emotion possible between two individuals. Its experience, therefore, so far from being an animal reaction, is a self-revelation. The values giving rise to this kind of response must be ones most intensely held and personal. When people do fall in love, assuming that each is romantically free and the context otherwise appropriate, sex is a necessary and proper expression of their feeling for each other. Platonic love under such circumstances would be a vice, a breach of integrity. Sex is to love what action is to thought, possession to evaluation, body to soul. We live in our minds, and existence is the attempt to bring that life into physical reality, to state it in gesture and form. Sex is the preeminent form of bringing love into physical reality, involving emotions and sensations. However, there is a conflict between emotions and sensations. Emotions are states of consciousness with bodily accompaniments and with spiritual or even sinister, intellectual, causes. This last factor is the basis for distinguishing emotion from sensation. A sensation is an experience transmitted by purely physical means, it is independent of a person's ideas. Touch a man with a red hot poker, and he unavoidably feels certain sensations, heat, pressure, pain, regardless of whether he is a savage or a sophisticate, an objectivist or a mystic. By contrast, love, desire, fear, Anger, joy are not simply products of physical stimuli. They depend on the content of the mind. However, what makes emotions incomprehensible to many people is the fact that their ideas are not only largely subconscious, but also inconsistent. Men have the ability to accept contradictions without knowing it. This leads to the appearance of a conflict between thought and feelings. Making a commitment to Satanas, Lucifer, is a free choice, a well thought choice in fact. 8. Your commitment to the Prince of Darkness. 14. Self initiation. From the Black Book of Satan, the Codex Sayerus, ONA. Two rituals will be given, one for an indoor location, and one for an outdoor one. Choose the one you feel is most suitable for you. I, indoor. Set aside an area for the performance of the ritual and in this erect an altar and cover it with a black cloth. The altar may be a table. Obtain some black candles, some candle holders, some hazel incense, a quartz crystal or crystals. You will also need two small squares of parchment, or expensive woven paper, a quill type pen, a sharp knife, some sea salt, a handful of graveyard earth obtained on a night of the new moon, and a chalice which you should fill one with wine. All of these items should be placed on the altar. Should you wish, you may also obtain a black robe of suitable design. If not, you should dress all in black for the ritual. 9. An hour before sunset, enter your temple area, face east and chant the Sanctus Satanas twice. Then say, loudly, to you, Satan, Prince of Darkness and Lord of the Earth, I dedicate this temple, let it become, like my body, a vessel for your power and an expression of your glory. Then vibrate ages o Satanas nine times. After this, take up the salt and sprinkle it over the altar and around the room, saying, With this salt I seal the power of Satan in. Take the earth and cast it likewise, saying, with this earth I dedicate my temple. Satanas, Venaya. Satanas, Venaya. Ajos, Zero, Baphomet. I am God imbued with your glory. Then light the candles on the altar, burn plentiful one incense and leave the temple. Take a bath, and then return to the temple. Once in the temple, do the sinister blessing, see appendix, then facing the altar, lightly prick your left forefinger with the knife with the blood and using the pen inscribe on one parchment the occult name you have chosen, 
See Appendix 3 for some suggestions regarding names. On the other inscribe an inverted pentagram. Hold both parchments up to the east saying, With my blood I dedicate the temple of my life. Then turn counter sunwise three times, saying, I, state the occult name you have chosen, am here to begin my sinister quest. Prince of Darkness, hear my oath. 10. Baphomet, Mistress of Earth, hear me. Hear me, you dark gods waiting beyond the abyss. Burn the parchments in the candles. Note, it is often more practical to fill a vessel with spirit and place the parchments in this and then set the spirit alight. However if you have chosen woven paper, this method will not be necessary, as they burn, say. Satan, may your power mingle with mine as my blood now mingles with fire. Take up the chalice, raise it to the east, saying. With this drink I seal my oath. I am yours and shall do works to the glory of your name. Drain the chalice, extinguish the candles and then depart from the temple. The initiation is then complete. 2. Outdoor. Find a suitable outdoor area. It should be near a stream, lake or river. The ritual should be conducted on the night of the full moon at a time halfway between sunset and sunrise. You will need, ambergris soil, black candles, in lanterns if possible, two squares of parchment or woven paper, sharp knife or silver pen, quill type pen, black robe or clothes, chalice full of wine. Begin the ritual by bathing naked in the stream, lake or river. After, rub the ambergris oil into the body, saying as you do ages o satanas. Then change into the robe clothes and proceed to where the candles etc have been laying out on the ground. Light the candles. Then facing east, conduct a satanic blessing, see appendix. After, chant the sanctus satanas. 11. Then prick your left forefinger with the knife, pin and inscribe one parchment with your chosen occult name. Inscribe an inverted pentagram on the other. Hold both parchments up to the east, saying, With my blood I dedicate the temple of my life. Then turn counter sunwise and three times saying, I, state your occult name, am here to begin my sinister quest. Prince of Darkness, hear me. Hear me, you dark gods waiting beyond the abyss. Burn the parchments in the candles. If parchment, use the method given in I above, as they burn, say. Satan, may your power mingle with mine as my blood now mingles with fire. Take up the chalice and say. With this drink I seal my oath. I am yours and shall do works to the glory of your name. Drain the chalice, extinguish the candles, collect all the items you have used and depart from the area. The initiation is then complete. 12. What happens when I make a formal commitment to Satanas? Satanas or Lucifer looks out for his own. Satanas energy or vibration gives us an inner strength and we become very strong in spirit. Unlike right hand path religions, where adherents are forever praying and searching for their god, Satanas comes to us on his own. Many times, we can feel him. He comes to guide us when we get down, worried, or are experiencing problems. He snaps us into line and directs us as to what we need to do to be focused and happy. The foundation of traditional Satanism is in our finishing Satanas work upon humanity. This is the goal of the Godhead, and is accomplished through power meditation. Humanity is currently at a very low level spiritually. When we begin to meditate, we experience profound positive changes within our lives. Satanas and his demons the original gods, protect us and look out for us as we transform and achieve personal power. With Satanas, we have protection that outsiders do not have. We can advance in the powers of the mind and soul as far as we wish. For outsiders, this can prove dangerous. Satan also gives us knowledge. I lead to the straight path without a book. As we transform and grow, our lives change for the better and we are much happier.
we learn through satanic philosophy as in the order of nine angles how to take control of our own lives and destiny instead of being at the mercy of 13. Fate. We learn to heal ourselves, and to fulfill our own desires, using the powers of our mind and soul. In making a commitment, we engage a formal ritual. This is done out of free will. We are making a choice, as opposed to being dragged off to some Christian church, and reciting canned prayers, stolen and corrupted from Eastern mantras, in front of a bunch of idiots. With knowledge and research, we can prove beyond all doubt that the Nazarene, Jehovah and saints are all fictitious characters, stolen from and corrupted concepts to remove all spiritual knowledge so that the chosen few can rule the world using powers of the mind and soul. How did Satan as a figure get into the story of Christianity and the Islam? It stems from a schism in Semitic faiths, and the Catholic or Universalist agenda of early Christianity, afterwards the Islam. This schism in Semitic faiths echoed even in Egyptian religion. This is why there was a conflict between them and the Egyptians. Set was a Semitic deity that at one time still acknowledged as divine. It was the Persians who had much contact with the Hindu people, and the term Hindu comes from the Magi's reference to those who live south of the Sindhu river. The Persian influence was responsible for introducing the concept of there being a dark counterpart to the holy god, and there being a conflict between them. That that was even possible. In the Quran, the Efreet were not angels. They were more like man and when Allah created man of the earth he told Abla Lord of the Efreet, that man was created higher than him. Abla rejected this, not out of aspirations to Allah's throne, but from refusing to humble himself and his kind to humanity. So again no defection from the angelic hierarchy. Abla was not an angel. But to return to the root Semitic issue. The creator deity is a heavily debated figure and there are references to there being a split between him and the world in Judaism and the Yazidi faith as well as in Islam. Now strangely there is a reference to a being haven been given authority over the world. The debate is whether this being is legit or not, but the actual authority is not denied. So in fact there is the prince of the air. The debate is whether there is war in heaven at all. My own insight says no. 14. What is the authority that is not debated? The Prince of the Air. The powers and the principalities referenced in the Bible, the Book of Revelation, does not deny the Prince of the Air's authority, but supposedly he will be required to bend knee or give obeisance to the demiurge that created the universe. Though it sort of runs contradictory to most of the text. So, the book of Revelation's predictions are of God undoing what he originally did. This whole process is heavily debatable. Serpent imagery is widespread as is a divinity of the air being a feathered serpent in Aztec culture. In all cultures this spirit is a liberator, and in the Yezidi faith being liberated from the authority of the Demiurge was from compassion to man not from any corrupt motive. Many of the spirits that were demonized were just on the wrong side of the schism when the Roman Empire took up Christianity. They were demonized because Rome couldn't have anything that would compromise Roman temporal and spiritual power. To date Catholicism is still referenced to the Holy Roman Dominion. Hinduism doesn't have the equivalent concept of Satan, being more like Judaism in that sense. There is no satanic divinity in Hinduism though there are divinities that Christians eagerly demonize as they do with all cultures. Judaism doesn't have Satan in the Christian sense. Judaism has no fallen angel. The concept of a fallen spirit that hates humanity is from Islam, but even in that case it is not a fallen angel. Even Islam has seen the Kurds who still revere the Prince of the Air, male to us, as devil worshippers. These Kurds would in fact deny that as Jews will refuse to talk about the Christian concept of the devil. Catholicism explored a hybridized figure, and original faiths had no Satan as it's now defined either. When Jesus spoke against Satan in his retreat he spoke against the adversary, not the embodiment of sin. Sin was not present as a spirit, but as a human characteristic and the adversary was judgment or doubt. So he spoke against his capacity for doubt 
self-doubt. Satan or Lucifer. Satan, Satanas, also goes by the aliases as Lucifer, the Prince of Light, the Antichrist, the Devil, Diabolos, Prince of Darkness, etc. Satan, according to the erroneous teaching of Christianity and Islam is a great entity who lives in hell. Contrary to his notorious reputability, Satan with his many names is not that bad of an entity. By manner of speaking legendary, he enjoys long walks on. 15. Short Beaches. Incidentally, Footprints in the Sand was stolen from Satan, which was originally called Hoofprints in the Sand, drinking champagne with his friends after an evening out on the town, and skipping through flower-filled meadows during the spring, although, the flowers sometimes catch on fire, and have a tendency to spontaneously combust on contact with his skin. Common knowledge attributes Satan with inspiring the genre of music known as heavy metal. Satan himself is a virtuoso of the electric guitar, a 1978 article in Guitarist Magazine, USA, described his style as faster than the speed of light and decidedly badass. Among the heavy metal personalities that claim to have business relations with Satan are the band's Cannibal Corpse, Behemoth, Slayer, Dithclick, Emperor, Dimmerborga, and every past and present member of the band Venom. Satan the Prince of Darkness, can now be found in the deepest bowels of hell and abyssal paradise, otherwise known as France, Mexico, Chicago, Oakland, Compton, or Southeast United States. The scum hole. Satan also spends large amounts of his time minionizing his fellow demons and humans on earth. His powerful call of minion has been known to fell even the strongest men. Satan has also decided to take up the task of overseeing Apple computers in the absence of Steve Jobs due to sex change operation that went wrong as after, he had hamster genitals. Satan has had quite a lot of trouble with making Max useful, but is confident that he will eventually figure out what Max were intended to do. Satan, Satanas. The name devil is given to a supernatural entity who, in most Western religions, is the central embodiment of evil. This entity is commonly referred to by a variety of other names, including Satan, Lucifer, Mephistopheles, and Beelzebub. In classic demonology, however, each of these alternate names refers to a specific supernatural entity, and there is significant disagreement as to whether any of these specific entities is actually evil. The word devil is derived from the Greek word diabolos, to slander, and the term devil can refer to a greater demon in the hierarchy of hell. At the same time, the term devil is also derived from the same Indo European root word for diva, which roughly translates as angel. The notion of a central supernatural embodiment of evil, as well as the notion of angels, first arose in Western monotheism when Judaism came into contact with the Persian religion of Zoroastrianism. Unlike classical monotheism, Zoroastrianism features two gods, one good and one evil, locked in a cosmic 16. Struggle where both are more or less evenly matched and the outcome is uncertain. Ahurimazda, wise lord, also known as Ahmazd, is the god of light, and Ahriman, evil spirit, also known as Angrimaniu, is the god of darkness. In a final battle between the supernatural forces of good and evil, human souls will be judged in a fiery ordeal, and only the good will survive. Accordingly, humans are urged to align themselves with the god of light and his angels and to shun the god of darkness and his demons. Christianity views Satan as a being created by God, whereas the evil god of Zoroastrianism is not a created being. We encourage our adepts, and the general masses, to openly praise Satan, the prince of darkness and of our abyssal minds, and testify as such on the liberating effects of Satanism found in every indisputable Satanist. This is a public forum for praising our liberator of religious, hypocritical philosophies, as mass child abuse in Roman Catholicism, Orthodoxy, and among Jews. In Islam, for child abusers, the Sharia, Islamic laws, drastically deals with the problem. 
Origins of Satan Satan was originally called Lucifer, which means light bringer. He was a seraphim, angel, in heaven. Eventually as to mythology, he grew jealous of God's power and attempted to overthrow him, gathering up legions of followers and revolting against God. He was defeated by Michael the archangel and cast into hell as punishment. It is said that on the day of judgment Satan shall rise to power again and lead another war against heaven. This time he and his followers will be cast down by God himself and sent to a lake of burning fire, hell, as an eternal punishment for their many sins. In Islamic belief Satan is referred to as a blood shaitan, and did not rebel against God out of a jealousy of the Creator's power but rather out of contempt for mankind, who God created and had his other creations bow down to. Ubli refused to bow to mankind and was as such banished from paradise and given only the power to corrupt humans until the day God would return to pass judgment on the world. In the Old Testament, he is simply an angel referred to as Ha Satan, or the adversary. It is important to note that he was viewed as the enemy of man, not God. He was one of God's closest angelic advisors. The Satan's job was to tempt man away from God's law. This was intended as a means of testing man's righteousness. A description of Satan is found in the Old Testament. Ezekiel 28 hours 12 minutes minus 19. 17. You were the perfection of wisdom and beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Your clothing was adorned with every precious stone, red carnelian chrysolite, white moonstone, beryl, onyx, jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald, all beautifully crafted for you and set in the finest gold. They were given to you on the day you were created. I ordained and anointed you as the mighty angelic guardian. You had access to the holy mountain of God and walked among the stones of fire. You were blameless in all you did from the day you were created until the day evil was found in you. Your great wealth filled you with violence, and you sinned. So I banished you from the mountain of God. I expelled you, O mighty guardian, from your place among the stones of fire. Your heart was filled with pride because of all your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. So I threw you to the earth and exposed you to the curious gaze of kings. You defiled your sanctuaries with your many sins and your dishonest trade. So I brought fire from within you, and it consumed you. I let it burn you to ashes on the ground in the sight of all who were watching. All who knew you are appalled at your fate. You have come to a terrible end, and you are no more. In popular culture Satan is depicted as a red-skinned humanoid with the legs of a goat, similar in many ways to the Roman god Pan. He varies from having bat-like wings or none at all and tends to have a long tail with a forked end, his weapon of choice tends to be a pitchfork and he is always seen tending to the fires of hell or tempting some poor soul. An adept shapeshifter Satan is said to take on any form he pleases in order to tempt people but the satyr form, known as a diabolos, remains one of his most famous personas. Satan is also frequently confused with Bathomit, a goat-headed demon, an hermaphrodite, strongly associated with black magic and due to this the two beings often merge, this is also the case of many of Satan's alter egos, such as Beelzebub, Lord the Flies, or Baal, many of Satan's alter egos are based on ancient fertility gods or pagan deities that the early church viewed as evil and as such added into an infernal hierarchy of demons with Satan as their lord and master, over the centuries however demonology became less popular and the infernal hierarchy concept faded away, though some still believe in it. Symbolism According to the Abrahamic faiths, Satan is the embodiment of pure evil, however, evil to good. In the story of Adam and Eve, Satan is represented as a serpent. He tricks Eve into eating the forbidden fruit through deception and 18. Manipulation. It is said that sin is caused by temptation, which, in turn is caused by Satan. Thus, Satan was responsible for mankind's first sin.
Christianity and the Islam infringe Satan as embodying the darker parts of humanity that most civilized people frown upon, things such as violence, lust and a lack of faith, a reminder of the more animalistic, or savage, origins that humans may have had and the fear that without proper guidelines, such as the biblical commandments or modern law, we would return to such savage behavior. A good example of this thought is seen in the story The Lord of the Flies. Role of Lucifer in the Hereafter Before his fall, Satan held the position of accuser, which was a position much like a prosecutor in modern human courts, he was also seen as one of God's most beloved angels in many texts yet became his most powerful and recurring opponent following his fall. Traditional Satanism Throughout history, there have been many people who worshipped Satan as, Satan. Long ago, a segment of the Roman Catholic Church, called the Inquisition, searched for witches, who they believed worshipped Satan. During this time, many people were falsely accused of witchcraft, leading them to be brutally tortured by the Inquisition. Nowadays, Satan adepts are called Satanists. It is worth noting however that technically Satanism is not the actual worship of Satan, unless it is what is referred to as theological Satanism, societies such as the Church of Satan are not practitioners of theological Satanism and instead embrace a more humanistic, albeit selfish, philosophy that does not worship any external deity or demon, rather seeing individuals as their own gods. Theological Satanism is rare but does exist though it is often confused with many other philosophies known as the left-hand path. Rather, Satanism is a philosophy. Alternate names for Satan as, Satan. Satan as, Satan, like the concept of evil to good he embodies, takes many forms and has also taken many names, most of Satan's alter egos can be traced either to ancient fertility gods that were demonized by the early church or higher ranking. 19. Demons that have gradually become into wind with the legend of Satan and become more renowned as a part of Satan himself, some of his more well-known names are Lucifer, Beelzebub, Prince of Darkness, Lord of Illusion, Prince of Lies, The Serpent, Nicholas Scratch, The Devil, The Beast, Pazuzu, Moloch, and Baal. The Inferno Created by Christianity Along the Ages In Dante Alire's epic poem the Inferno, Satan is trapped in Cositus, the ninth and final circle of hell, the circle reserved for the treacherous and traitorous. He is depicted with three heads, in a mockery of the Holy Trinity, God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, and each head is chewing on a dead soul. Within Satan's left and right mouths feet first are Brutus and Cassius, the murderers of Julius Caesar. In the middle mouth head first is Judas Iscariot, betrayer of Jesus Christ. He suffers the worst torment of all, having his head chewed and back raked by Satan's claws for all eternity. Satan himself is trapped waist deep in a sheet of ice. His wings beat in an eternal struggle to escape his frigid prison, yet the winds that his wings create only ensures that he is trapped further along with every other soul in Cossetis. Virgil and Dante escape Cositus by climbing down Satan's fur through the center of the world, and re-emerging at the Mount of Purgatory, Roman Catholic invention in the 595 by Pope Gregory the Great. Christian teaching about Lucifer, later called Satan, Satanas. The devil's sin had both content and quality. The content is his choice in freedom to reject God in the pursuing of natural happiness, only possible in freedom. It was impossible that Diabolos, devil, one of the highest angels, should have believed that he could actually equal God. He wanted to be like God in office, comma, and that is not in the sense of being equal to the Creator, but in the sense of being free to command along the natural laws, and in this being free to command his own salvation. Already here, through Lucifer, the God of light, man needed a savior. For this, he wished to be independent of God. Christianity claims that Lucifer's sin is pride, which lay in his wish to seize happiness through his own resources. True freedom does not mean license to do what you want. 
it means allowing truth to run your life. Allowing the unknowability of truth in. 20. Your life is wisdom. It allows you to put down the baggage of obsessive planning and just be as one wish him or herself to be. In the now comma you cannot know who you are, you can only be who you are. Wisdom moves, and you are that dot this freedom allows things to come to you, ideas, schemes, plans, whatever, in all freedom dot micro. The only teacher is who you essentially are already. What you are doing on the spiritual or sinister path is tapping into your true nature and allowing it to become conscious of itself through your person. The external teacher is that aspect of it that appears externally. And because your essence is one without a second, it cannot be an authority over you, just as a hand cannot grasp itself. The authority of the teacher within is to invite you to become conscious of who you actually are, or what your consciousness really is. All you have to do is listen to your inner core. According to theologians, Lucifer's sin did not take place at the moment of creation, for that would allow his free will no scope, and God would be responsible for creating him sinful. It must, therefore, have occurred after a moment's delay, a moment when the angel realized that he was not God, that this being depended on God, and that he had the choice of accepting this state of dependence or not. This is an acute extrapolation from human experience. The rage that occurs when we would first discover that we are not God, that our will need not to be done, that we would be disliked and ignored, that we will die, is the primal rebellion. However, contrary to hypocritical religion, we are one with the cosmos, the microcosms in the macrocosms, and in this awareness lies our stronghold. Men is a microcosm reflecting in miniature the composition and processes of the macrocosm as already mentioned above, and that means the total universe. What we find in the one is to be found in the other, and consequently, by studying the one we may learn, by analogy, the corresponding picture of the other. A familiar division of the human constitution describes man as threefold, body, soul and spirit. Esotericism makes use of the same division, found also in Plato and Paul, but shows the complex nature of each of the three parts. The body itself is regarded as threefold, consisting, in addition to the gross physical part, of a subtle or ethereal counterpart and of a vital principle or life force, prana. Soul is composed of two elements recognized in experience as the feeling and thinking aspects of ourselves. Body and soul together constitute the human. 21. Personality. The spiritual nature of man is also threefold and is the true individuality which, during incarnation, becomes associated with, or focused in, the personality. English has no precise term for the three aspects of spirit. Hence the use in occult literature of the Sanskrit terms Atma, Buddhi and Manas, which are explained in the paragraphs that follow. The distinction between personality, the ordinary man, and individuality, the spiritual man, should be particularly noted. According to esoteric science, there are then in man seven principles or aspects, making of him or her another god colon. 1. The physical body the vehicle of all the other principles or aspects during life. In Sanskrit, Rupa, or Sthila Sharira, Rupa, a visible form, Sthila, bulky, thick, gross, Sharira, that which easily moulders or is dissolved, the outward aspect, suggesting impermanence. 2. The vital principle or life force that permeates and animates the physical body. It is necessary only to the aspects numbered 1, 3 and 4 in this table, and to the mental functions that operate through the physical brain. In Sanskrit, prana, breath, spirit, vital air. 3. The subtle or ethereal counterpart of the physical body. It has been variously termed the astral body or double, the phantom body, the model body. Traditional occultism affirms, the birth of the astral before the physical body, the former being a model for the latter in Sanskrit, lingasharira, linga, a characteristic mark, hence model or pattern. 4. 
the vehicle of the grosser desires and passions. As no precise term exists in English, the Sanskrit term Kamarupa is generally translated as the desire body. This does not become a distinct body until after death. It is said to be the seat of animal desires and passions. This fourth principle, being the middle one of the seven, is further described as the center of the animal man, where lies the line of demarcation which separates the mortal man from the immortal entity, see paragraph 5 below. In Sanskrit, Kama Rupa, Kama, Desire. These four together form the lower quaternary or the fourfold personality, the mortal man, conditioned by the previous life, but formed anew according to karmic law for each incarnation. 22. Clearly distinguished from the mortal quaternary is the immortal spiritual entity, the individuality, termed the upper imperishable triad. Its three aspects are 5. The principle of mind which links the higher with the lower, the individuality with the personality. It is taught that formed a new manners. The mind principle is dual in its functions. During life, it may gravitate downward to Kamarupa, that is, it may become so identified with the lower or passional nature that it must finally disintegrate with it, or it may gravitate upward towards the spiritual consciousness, the true ego, see below, and so win its immortality. Manners, the mental faculty, makes of man an intelligent and moral being, and distinguishes him from the mere animal in Sanskrit, manners, the mind, from a root meaning to think. 6. The monad, the essential unit of active, universal life which, together with manners, becomes the conscious reincarnating ego, the spiritual entity overshadowing every personal man. The monad is the combination of atma, pure spirit, ineffective by itself, and its vehicle buddhi, termed the spiritual soul. 7. As the monad is one and indivisible, it is not an individual entity, it is the one universal life. Atma is regarded as one with the absolute, as its radiation. It can act in the lower planes only when in combination with its vehicle, buddhi, and can then only be regarded as a unit component of man's ego when in association with manners, man's individual mind, that is ego is monad plus manners. Lucifer, together with the fallen angels were as it were punished as soon as they sinned. They were cast out of heaven into the lower air and under the earth. The heart of their punishment is their awareness that they are deprived of their natural union with God. Once the angels' choice is made they cannot reverse it. According to hypocritical Christian religions, Lucifer and his followers are forever damned and can never be saved. So, the myth or legend at the time and around creation. However, theistic evolutionists accept all scientific discoveries and believe that Genesis chapter 1 was a metaphorical description of millions of years of evolutionary processes that were guided by an unknown powerful energy, poorly called God. The origins of humanity are somewhat a matter of contention under this position, with some believing that Adam was not chronologically the first human others believing that he was but he had a natural birth from a non-human parent, others claiming he was created. 23. Miraculously hermaphrodite but that this is an exception from the usual evolutionary rule. Also, there are those who believe and teach that fallen angels rule the earth as angelic principalities and powers. They claim that this spiritual conflict is largely unseen, with heavenly holy angels combating the fallen angels who are under the charge of Satan, or Lucifer, the Prince of Light. They teach that fallen angels are indeed demons, who roam the earth looking to inflict harm upon mankind. They have even given them names. Roman Catholics and fundamentalist Christians teach that fallen angels will be fully unloosed upon the earth and permitted by God to wreak the worst possible in order for mankind to repent and accept Jesus as Savior. Those who accept Christ, they claim, will be saved from such wrath, including the eventual eternal punishment waged by God against Satan, his fallen angels, and any unrepentant humans. Such false teachings about fallen angels, demons, devils, 
Lucifer, Satan, and the like have been put together into such a storyline, by comparing ancient manuscripts primarily found within the Old and New Testaments. Other ancient writings have also been scoured to fill in gaps, such as Enoch, and Jubilees. Such teachings though, have created a great misunderstanding concerning fallen angels, and even angels in general. Angels are messengers, and fallen angels are messengers too whose message is supposed to be unenlightened for the hypocrites as we have known then ever since the Nazarene's message. Allow me to explain. When one speaks spiritual truth, or better yet, expresses love to another, this is an enlightened message. Angels, ministering spirits, speak messages of encouragement and guidance, always given with love being the motivator. Lucifer and his legion of angels bring light to the world, with the creative task of destroying and restoring. Lucifer was the first angel who, in fact, chose to fall, although it was more a conscious dive to earth than a fall. The term fallen angel is sometimes thought to be a fall from the grace of God but it actually means descend to earth. The job of fallen angels is to test the integrity of humans. Lucifer is the fallen angel's main man and has free will to decide how humans should be tested and brought to consciousness. Lucifer is second only to God and is often present with other entities, which are sometimes referred to as 24. Demons. Typically they are growling, snarling, dark and ugly looking, although, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. If you compare Lucifer to a snake you may find beauty in the ugliness in a similar way that some people find snakes beautiful. It is also thought by some that Lucifer and Satan are one and the same, although this is often subject to conjecture. It has been my personal experience that the unredeemed dark energy that resides with Lucifer, Satan or Satanas, has a huge amount of power. Christianity usually portrays Lucifer, Satan, the devil black or dark, but the opposite is also common he is seen livid or pallid, a hue associated with death, heretics, schismatics, and magicians to scare their followers, he is usually naked or wears only a loincloth the nakedness symbolizing sexuality, wildness and animality, the way humans being should be in freedom. His body is often muscular, often, too, very thin, but seldom fat, and, before the 12th century he is occasionally handsome and pleasant looking. He is very seldom female, but he can be in any form he wishes himself to be. As an animal, he is most frequently an ape, dragon, or serpent. The serpent with a human face appears in tart of many cultures, such representation seems to have become common in Christianity and its art in the 13th century. The serpent's human head related it to Adam and Eve more convincingly, the artistic tradition may have drawn on the theater, where the serpent had to be able to talk. It also symbolized the complicity in sin between human and devil. In addition, Misogynistic tradition emphasized Eve's guilt more than her husband's, so the serpent more often looked like Eve than like Adam. His most common animal characteristics after the 